What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fazan, man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through today's Monster Tuesday MLB slate after the long weekend. Hope everybody had a terrific Memorial Day and uh, weekend in general. And yeah, like I had, I had some mixed results. I had a really good day slate yesterday, even though it was looking like a really good day slate that turned into just a good day slate and then a, a, a lousy night slate and ready to play it, go to play a little bigger today to go after it. There's some big games going and we have just crazy weather all over the place. So just keep in mind, if you're, if you're picking, if you're stacking teams that aren't playing in like 80 degree weather, you're probably, uh, I'm not gonna say you're probably gonna lose. It's just probably the right thing in the long run to really attack these weather spots. The problem is there's just a lot of them. Sheets, how was your weekend? And then uh, jump into the slate. Yeah, so first of all, we got a nice long slate today. So we're just gonna take our time and get through it. But there's two things I just wanna bring up kind of unrelated to this. First of all, respect to this weekend, um, it's gonna be a while till we go over maybe an NBA slate. But I, I wanna say, I mean, the last freaking three minutes of that Celtic game, I mean, was just freaking breathtaking. I mean, yeah. like, unbelievable. I mean, it, it's so it's you talk about a like chaos theory. Like if, if, if Jimmy Butler makes that last shot, yeah. like, can you imagine the narrative? You know what I mean? Over yeah. the next like year for yep. both Miami and Boston, yep. you know, and it's funny, you know, and, and you know how, how close a shot is to going in or not, you know, it missed by an eighth of an inch mm -hmm. and the narrative is totally different. You know, it's it's so it's so cool when you think about it that way. Yeah. Um, second of all, with respect to baseball, I, I will say this: you know, um, I've been getting a lot of feedback for um, uh, based on users and what what we should be talking about in the Discord, whether we should be screenshotting, whether we should be bragging about takes or we're talking about people's you know results and things like that. I, I have my own thoughts on that. We'll we'll discuss that over the course of the next, I guess, many years, whatever. What, what's what's correct. But I do want to say this, okay? I, I, I came on yesterday and I didn't know if I was going to be able to do anything I had for barbecues, I had all kinds of stuff. Like, you know what? There are two slates. I'm going to come on there. I'm going to do like 20 minutes. I'm going to do 10 minutes on the first slate, 10 minutes on the second slate. And on the second slate, it, I did a total of six minutes on, on it. I basically said, okay, you, you want to fade this, you want to fade this. And I guess you're just supposed to play Baltimore in the Mets, right? Mm -hmm. And literally, that was almost the end of the whole discussion. Yeah. And, and, I, and I said, I wanted to lock in. Uh, Gallon, I think Bueller. I guess Bueller didn't do anything, but whatever. I want to lock those in, but basically the Mets and the Orioles just to do it. And then I saw that freaking the Mets and the Orioles went off. I'm like, boy, would, wouldn't it be nice if I actually played these teams? You know, <laughs> um, and and because I ended up like getting like way too fancy. But hopefully, hopefully people are, are are taking our advice and doing stuff. I am seeing in the Discord people just really post good stuff, but I think that kind of filters down from the from the owners and you know, I very rarely like post and anything like that, like screenshots. So maybe people don't, don't post as much, you know, whatever it is, but seriously, we, we love to hear when people succeed. So feel free to, yeah. feel free to post it in there. And listen, we've had this discussion before also, you know, look, listen, a lot of philosophies about celebrating and versus whatever. And maybe, again, maybe just cause I'm older now, whatever I, I used to be when I was in my thirties, I used to subscribe to like that Barry Sanders met, you know, uh, mentality, you know, yes. just, you get the touchdown, hand it to the referee, go down there, act with class, whatever. But I don't know what it is, you know, about when you get older, you feel like your time's a little less, you whatever. The, 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 the celebrations become like less. You know, you see that that the opportunity to celebrate is not as much in front of you as it was. So I take every opportunity to celebrate. Mm -hmm. I take every opportunity to brag, whatever it is, because especially in this business, it, it, with DFS and poker and anything gambler rated, all glory is so ephemeral. That, that you may as well enjoy it while it's there because you are going to go into like incredible down swings and you may as well enjoy the good stuff when it happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and good stuff is relative. So anybody, when yes. people post a hundred dollar win off of a dollar buy-in, that's, yep. that's, that's a massive win. You know what I mean? For, yep. for that individual. So yep. it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be 10 K 20 K 50 K to, to, in order to post about it. So with that said, let's jump right, in. Let's take our time, get through this monster. I, I promise you this, that I will be playing more than one lineup tonight. <laughs> yes. There's just, just so many things you could do. And, and, and um, uh, I do recommend that if you have the wherewithal to do so, to play multiple lineups tonight. So that's... Uh, and at the same time, we have, well, we don't have, um, we have pitchers that are going to be chalky. We don't have the obvious you need to play these pitcher type of pitch. I don't know. I don't know who that would even be. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. So that's, that, that's, that's the thing that's interesting, but I, I, I do think there's going to be some guys who it lands on, but you know, we start, we start off in this first game in Baltimore here and wait, let me, as, let me share my screen as well. Okay. Yeah. Let's pull your All screen right. up. Um, 
yeah, I mean, this is one of those other hot games. <laughs> um, it's 89 degrees. Uh, you've got wind blowing out a little bit, not, not, not much wind. And Baltimore is, is not the hitter's park that it once was, but still, uh, still viable enough. And I could see an argument for both sides of this. You're going to hear this a number of times from me today. I also think that Kirby is definitely in play. Um, I just think that we want to take advantage of, you know, the upside of the talent from a team who's never seen him before. And this is, he's one of the guys in a long list of pitchers I have tonight, but probably has a little more upside than some of the other guys in terms of a strikeout per inning type of a deal. So I'm interested in Kirby and I am interested in the Seattle stack. Although I, I'm not, I'm guessing by the end of the day, I'm not going to be that high on it, but I'd certainly like, I mean, if this, if this game was two weeks ago, this would probably be like the obvious Seattle's at 30% ownership kind of a thing because we didn't have weather like this, but 90 degree heat in Baltimore uh, against uh, basically, basically a bullpen situation uh, with Brian Baker and then a, a pretty bad bullpen behind him. Um, so I, I'm open to everything. I think Jesse Winker as a one-off makes a lot of sense. I think uh, Julio Rodriguez, but it's, it's a stack Seattle possibly. And uh, Kirby is, is a, one of my long shot pitchers. Yeah. Um, so I, I sort of agree with this. Um, when you're looking at this slate, you, you have, you know, plenty of opportunities for big runs to be scored throughout the slate. Okay. And, and, th and this is one of them. You have big weather, you know, yeah. Okay. Baltimore is not the hitters park. It was last year, but it's still, it, it's still 90 degrees. Yep. And Kirby is, you know, he's, he's, he's young, which is good and bad. Right. He, he uh, he, he, he certainly is someone you could play for cheap. Um, mm -hmm. And I really thought about, really thought about whether I want to play Keegan Aiken as, as a long reliever. Um, but, but my, my, my theory being that I just want to pay as little for pitching as humanly possible tonight. Yeah. Um, because I just feel as though this, it's very unlikely that any pitcher does anything. Um but I just couldn't quite get there. So if it were me, I would say Kirby would be the pitching option from this game. And my first run got me quite a bit of Seattle. So I'm just presuming that they're going to end up being chalky as a result mm. of that. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on it. But 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 Seattle, I think, is definitely viable. And I'm not quite getting to Kirby yet. But but listen, once I start building and start to really fall in love with probably some of these like upside stacks, I'm probably going to end up just forcing myself to get there. So mm -hmm. for me, um, I, it's a long way of saying, I probably agree with you, Seattle, and then probably some Kirby. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that you got them. Cause I, I cause I don't, I, I currently on, on, you know, multiple sites, they don't, they don't project to be as that high owned, but that's because I think you'll see what, see why when we go through all the other games. Well, 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 I'll tell you something that's really interesting is, is we're going to shout out to Sabres in here because, um, you know, what I do is I, 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 I do my projections. I, and just before the day starts, I throw them into Sabres and I'm just presuming that the lineup is, is what it's going to be, which it isn't presuming the projections stay what they're going to be, which they won't. All right. And presuming I don't make any, make any changes, which I probably will. What would my overall exposure be? And the funny thing is, is when I, when, I, when I just rank these stacks, I don't even have Seattle ranked in the top six, mm -hmm. either by, um, by raw or by value. Mm -hmm. And yet, when I ran the actual builds, this is so weird. I, I get literally, and I did like 100, I actually did 30 lineups, whatever it is. I got 60% maybe, no, 40% Seattle. <laughs> and yeah. the other is another team that I don't even rank that high. So it's, it's going to be, going to be interesting to see it's a very very big slate um uh i don't think i could play a 60 percent sh uh, share of seattle <laughs> um mm -hmm. but just to show you that that teams like this you can you can get to and and can get a, and i i think it's a, i think it's a pretty good play yeah i agree um all right let's jump over to your yankees against the angels um I think by the end of the day, this is a stay away for me. I'm still tempted. And I know the strikeout numbers haven't been what they used to be, but excuse me, <clears throat> but I still believe that there is talent for Syndergaard. I don't think I'm going to end up doing it. I think there are some strikeouts in that Yankee lineup and Syndergaard coming off his best outing of the year, pitched eight innings against Texas after getting rocked in the first inning. Everybody wanted to stack Texas the other day. And uh, he basically just completely shut them down for eight innings. I, I'm open to that. It's in the guard is going to get better with it, with each, with his starts. I mean, there's going to be some hiccups along the way, but 
I, I think that he's on my long list of guys to consider. Uh, and other than that, I think that, you know, could, could they blow him up? Sure. I, I just think for me, I'm probably just looking at potentially a trout one off and then maybe send guard in this game. Nothing special here. So I want to shout out to, um, to Kevin Roth. He does a really good job with the weather for, for Rota grinders. And also this guy, Mark Paquette does a good job. There's a guy, a lot of guys that are really good, mm-hmm. but, but I want to, I want to tell you something here. Here's the sheets forecast for New York. It's effing hot out. Right. Okay. I, I, I walk to work during the day and it is as hot as it has ever been at this time of the year. It is, it is 90 now going up to 94. God knows if, I mean, what it's going to be a game type. It's got to be lower than that, but it can't be much lower. It's still going to be in the eighties. And um, I, I'm not, I'm not playing any of these pitchers today. <laughs> just, yeah, just, no, I hear you. It ain't happening. Not to mention that Montgomery probably has five innings in this freaking leash anyway, even if he has a good game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm probably off of this. And, and like the only way I would play a, uh, a pitcher in, in this environment today is if I really thought he had a lot of strikeout upside. And I just haven't seen that from Syndergaard yet this year. Um, so I'm probably going to stay off of this. Um, as far as the hitting goes, huh, I do have the Yankees in there. You know, uh, I, it would be, I would be kind of a fool to not consider them in this weather just with this talent, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to, I have them as one of the one of the many teams that, <laughs> that I could probably get to on this slate. For whatever reason, I don't have the Angels. Um, but maybe you're right. Maybe just you know, just you, know, you like the Angels, like the weather so much. Take a Trout one off. Take an Otani one off. Take take a mm-hmm. who's the guys Walsh. I mean, whatever. Like uh, so so yeah. But I don't think I, I would full stack the Angels. And oh, man, part of me really wants to do this with the with the Yankees. So I, I might end up getting a little bit of that. I mean, and not only that, there's wind blowing out too, but I, I get it. I just, um, again, it, it's sort of like, which side of it do you take? There's tons yeah. of strikeouts in this Yankee lineup. You basically have a minor league lineup from five on yeah. uh, Joey Gallo. I'm including in that. Cause what he'll do is he'll, he'll hit the occasional home run, but he's going to strike out twice every game basically. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do think there are some strikeout upside here, but uh, you know, maybe if we got Bill Miller behind the plate or something like that, I would consider Syndergaard a little heavier, but I completely understand. And the Yankees do have cheap bats like Andahar, like Gallo, um, who's probably gonna be batting further down. And even Carpenter, who hit a home run in his second game as a Yankee the other day. Yeah. Um, there's cheap bats to make it work. I just I just personally am not as high on it as I am some of these other spots. Uh, all right. Uh, this is, I, I think, going to be the chalkiest pitcher of the night. He's probably the best pitcher on the slate. Uh, there are strikeouts. Well, which, which one? They're both good pitchers. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm more inclined to attack attack Chicago, who strikes out more over the last season plus. Not necessarily just taking it all in this year. And I think Gaussman is just, you know, he doesn't walk people. He doesn't really uh, ever have a really bad outing. Uh, he, he had the the rough one against Seattle, but even that, it was just like sort of a a game where he, you know, got sort of babbipped around. I think Gauss, Gaussman is pretty clearly the number one pitcher on the slate, and. I think that, you know, you just even look at, you know, he's, they only got, they both, these guys only have five and a half K props, which is lower than I would have thought for Gaussman here. I actually think that might be a really good bet considering Gaussman's only been below, he's been at five or below twice this season in nine starts. And um, I, I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the side that Gaussman is a really good play, but I don't know that we need to even go there. And I, and I think Giolito's a great pitcher or with or great, with great strikeout upside against a team that doesn't strike out a ton. And that does worry me a little bit. So I have Giolito. I have them both on my list, but I definitely have Gaussman as the priority as the, of a guy who I'm actually going to play. He's in one of my core plays right now. So that's where I'm at with this one. No hitting interest for me. Um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I agree with that. I, I have Gaussman as a um, uh, top pitcher. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I, I'll, I'll rate him as the top pitcher on, on, a, on a slate that, that's going to have a lot of runs scored. So um, this, this could end up being, by the way, uh, a situation where even if Chicago gets to him, he still, he still scores well enough um, mm-hmm. to overcome some of these other pitching results that could happen today. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's fair enough. I, I, I guess Gausman I would have as my top. I, I have two others who I like also, but, but I, I guess so. I'm not quite getting to Giolito today. Um, uh, I, I, I just have this also this feeling though that 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 it's too cute to play 
Look, I like playing Toronto. You really got me on board this whole thing. You know, always can't just kind of keep playing a little bit Toronto. Mm-hmm. But I just think that there are other teams that are, you know what I mean? I'd ra- there are other teams against worse pitchers that, that I think I'd rather go after. So I don't think I'm going to get to Toronto. I, I see I see how, why you want to play it. But um, mm-hmm. for me, I'll get to Gausman. And I, I just don't think I'm going to get to Giolito today. It's going to be Gausman and maybe none of the hitting. I don't know. That's that's where I'm at right now. I would say that all the Toronto guys, you could certainly argue for them as one-offs. There, we've never seen Toronto priced like this before. Um, in the whole time that since they've had these guys, they've never been priced this far down. Um, Giolito will give up some home runs, and I, I would certainly not mind a Vlad one-off at 4.6, which is just kind of like offensive to him. Um, <laughs> and uh, and George Springer even at 4.8. I, I think this is a this is a spot where I wouldn't again. I don't want to stack Toronto against Giolito, but I do think that you could take a couple of these bats, and it makes a lot of sense. So, uh, all right, now we have a, a bad weather game, which is going to basically keep me off of it. Which is it's really strange to see. Okay, so it's you know this is these places are not far apart from each other. It's going to be 90 in 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 New York tonight, and it's going to be 56 in Boston. That's not something we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing pretty similar trends for the weather. Um, it's it, I, I just I don't understand it. But uh, I, I think this game is basically a, a cross off for me. Um, I, I don't have anything I particularly want to do. I actually think that you can make an argument for Waka just because of how bad Cincinnati is. That's basically all I've I've got, and that's not an exciting play either. So you can't you can't do Castillo here against Boston. It's a little trickier for me to do it. I, I do like betting on the you know the overall talent. I think it's I think it's fine. Um, Boston's lineup is there. They've been until last night. They've been really really good. They've been on fire. They got totally shut down last night. Maybe you could do Castillo um, for that to happen back to back. Maybe um, you do have wind blowing in and 56 degree weather. So I think Castillo belongs in the, I guess, in the conversation. Uh, maybe yeah, he's not, he's not my favorite or anything like that. I just figured I, I would, you know, I don't even really have my top six or seven. I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a name and I'm trying to find pictures. So that's. Yep. Um, yeah, no, that's, 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 they all make sense from a map standpoint. And, and if you're going to take a one-off Nick Senzel, if he does in fact lead off at 2.4, that's that will stand out as a value play that I think makes a lot of sense. So uh, that's the only thing I have hitting wise from this game. Anything for you that stands out? Nope. All right. Watch, watch for traffic in New York today. You got, you got home Yankee game and home Met game. Doesn't happen. I know. Um, no, seriously. I know. Well, so here we get Here we go. She's talk about a little bit about this Mets game. Cause again, we have the same, same weather thing going on here. And uh, well, we have we have we have the same weather thing, and we have you know, and we have the Mets against Corbin. And uh, I'll just say this again: um, if 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 the Mets just all of a sudden become like huge chalk, um, just keep in mind they did score a thousand runs last night, um, which which you know I don't like to do to do. And if I'm not mistaken, Corbin was in the winning lineup last night. We pitched. Um, it was no, I, I thought about this, and, and and I'm looking to pay down for pitching. And and listen, I again, I have nothing to support this, but but if you're gonna if you're gonna play against a team that scored a zillion runs, you want like junk <laughs> against them. Um, so uh, I actually am probably gonna have some Corbin uh, again, just because he's cheap, and that's kind of what I'm gonna look for today in pitching. Um, now, with that said, I, I'll just say right off the bat, the Mets rate for me is probably probably the best overall stack. If you want to know the truth, and I, I and if that's the case, as I said, between them and maybe two other teams, I mean they'll probably just get owned pretty hard. But thirteen games play, how much can you really play somebody? I don't know. We'll see. But the Mets are certainly rating really, really high. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to get carried away with playing them. Yep, I I, uh, I I'm I'm high on the Mets right now. Uh, they are one of my preferred stacks. They're one of my top four at the moment. At the same time, I don't mind a little hedge with Corbin. The only thing that's struggling that I'm struggling with with him is the just that the strikeout numbers are so low, even though he's getting through innings. And, you know, it's it's, you know, other than a couple games, he really hasn't given up all that much. But it's it's just the the lack of strikeouts. Just I think I'd rather play Kirby just who has the strikeout upside, I feel like a little better than Corbin does, but I'm certainly open to the idea of Corbin, especially if I have the Mets everywhere, why not throw Corbin into a couple lineups um, where it's a long shot. People thought it was nuts last time. I also want to say that 
I, I don't think that like Washington, I think is getting way overlooked here. I think Juan Soto is one of the best plays on the slate. Um, and I don't mind if you wanted to go the other way and, 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 and take a, at least a mini stack against uh, what the weather's the same uh, for the nationals. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and they got, they got the wind blowing out to right field. So that, that, that screams more towards the, uh, the left-handed hitters than it does the right-handed hitters. So the Mets who you're going to want to play the righties because that's, that's the better, the better hitters on their team. And, and they're mostly going to be righties today. Um, but I think that Soto, uh, Soto Cruz Ruiz, uh, Josh Bell, Cesar Hernandez, all these guys are, are fine in the vacuum. And, and I think certainly makes sense, at least as a mini stack. So I'm high on this game in general from a hitting perspective. And I, I think today is a day because of the extreme weather conditions where I'm going to want to know the umpire. I think it's going to be Greg Gibson, who's a pretty lean, leans as a hitters umpire, but not, not like drastically, but I'm going to be looking at the umpires for every game just because you're trying to find the advantages. And if you get a, if you get uh, pitchers that are somewhat wild and hot weather against teams that, you know, with the wind blowing out, you, you kind of want to take advantage of everything you can. So that's going to be a bigger factor for me today than most days. Also, we don't have great pitching. So I, I I'm definitely going to be higher on the umpire data today than I normally am. All right. You ready to go on to the next one? Yeah. So this is going to be the tempting uh, thing, right? Um, do we want to do something like play Kirby and, and this, this, this Sands character together? Um, I'll, I'll tell you what bothers me. And this is like just being so, I guess, so primitive about it. But, but I'm looking here and it says that, I mean, he has seven ERA and triple A, for Christ's sake. Um, I don't know, man. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know if I can do it. Um, uh, he's 4,700 against Detroit. Um, it's got to be worth something, but. I, I just don't know. I, I'll, I'll let you talk me in or out of that one, I guess. But I'm not going to make that a core thing of what I want to do. Um, what is showing up as a really, really strong play is, is Minnesota. Um, they, I have them as one of my top stacks uh, overall. Um, and we'll see where ownership comes in on these guys. But uh, that's, uh, that's definitely what I'm interested in. So I'm interested in Minnesota. And I really hope I don't play close in. Yeah, I'm not. I, I don't think that I'm. I'm playing either of these pitchers. Um, I, I, I. It's hot, and the the wind is blowing in pretty hard from right field. So if I think okay. the winds are showing up as a chalky stack, and uh, and I'm really not sure who's going to end up pitching this game. And so they have the double header today. So I, I don't even know who's going to play in this game. Okay. Um, and I think the easier thing for me right now, I guess, is to sort of, I don't say cross it off, but just. I don't really know exactly if I, I don't know if I can do anything with, uh, you know, again, like I, like you have sands, some sites have sands as starting um, some sites don't. So it's, I just don't know what's going to happen until we know who's actually pitching, but I'm a little bit le less into this game just because um, I, I mean, yeah, there's, there's talent in the, the Minnesota offense. Um, but you know, you do have that hard wind blowing in 13 miles an hour from right field. Uh, I think if you're going to play, you're, I think Buxton is going to be incredibly popular, and I'm always fine to play Buxton. Uh, Kyle Garlick is going to be the value play, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah. Uh, depending on if we do get the lefty in there. Yeah. And uh, and you can make it a little three-man with, with Sanchez, but I, I think there's other stacks that I like a little bit better as of right now. All right, so here comes here, – here, 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 this is what the, the public has been waiting for. Well, not the public. This is, like, this is where the, the analytic people are waiting for. So what do you do when you get – you finally get a lefty against the Cardinals and it's Blake Snell. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have Blake Snell who is, who is, who can do anything, right? Right. Uh, he can do anything. And you have the Cardinals who just, or just, or just really good. They have, they have like 13 righties in their starting lineup, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't, I was about to say, boy, wouldn't this be the ultimate troll if freaking Snell just like just mowed them down um, at no ownership. But uh, I'm just more inclined to to believe that the Cardinals are, are a good play here. Um, so I I would I would um, I would put the Cardinals in my list of, of teams that I think could put up a lot of runs. Um, and I don't I just don't think I can do Blake Snell against all those righties. It's a lot of righties. Um, I don't exactly mind him against against some righties um it's probably worth noting that paul goldschmidt has been the best player in baseball for this last month i mean it's really pretty ridiculous i think he's he got like 15, 14 doubles this month and he hit, he's hitting 420 with like 
uh, I don't know, nine home runs. It's pretty, he's had him in an incredible month. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to just end up staying away here, but I do think that I will, I'm definitely going to consider a little bit of Snell just because of the strikeout upside in general, even though it's a team that doesn't strike out. It's just, I, I'm just stuck a little bit. If he was like 7,100, I would yeah. probably be more into it. Um, but I'm, I'm probably staying away on both sides. I, I certainly could see an argument for any, any kind of thing here. You've got strong winds blowing out on a smaller slate. I would even be talking about stacking the Padres, but I'm, I'm probably just staying away here um, as well. So this next game for me is pretty close to a stay away. Um, Lauer against uh, Steele. If anything, I'm getting a little bit of Milwaukee. Um, but aside from that, um, it's going to be my 30th straight slate, not playing Eric Lauer, not playing hitters against Eric Lauer, I think. Um, and that's pretty much where I am. You like Milwaukee? You like anything here? I think it's interesting. I think the Lauer play is kind of interesting. Um, I actually think he's, I, I kind of am interested in him a little bit. I mean, again, it's perfect. This is like, and in Chicago, it matters more than it does as elsewhere, but 82 degrees and 13 mile an hour winds blowing out. And the exact way that San Francisco, you know, suppresses the wind, the Cubs in, in Wrigley, it really, really funnels with the wind. Now, we didn't see a high, we saw one high scoring game yesterday and the second one wasn't. I am interested in Milwaukee and especially Taylor and McCutcheon, um, just too cheap for the upside. If Hera again is batting fifth, they, you know, I would play him and I love Urias. So I've already got like a nice little stack there with those four. And then you could always throw Yelich in the lefty lefty. Um, so I actually do like Milwaukee and Chicago in general. I like, I like, I, 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 Chicago, it's more individual pieces like Contreras and Morel, I think are really good plays. I don't know if I want to stack against Lauer, but I don't mind taking a couple bats against him. So it's, it's not as high of a priority as it would normally be because of the, because of the other hitting conditions, other places, but I think this is not a bad spot to try to attack. So, um, but I, I also think Lauer as a long, as a long shot pitching option is, certainly uh, viable just because there's, there's not a whole lot of guys. I mean, you could play Lauer and Gaussman uh, would be, you know, two of the guys up in that nine K range. And I, I just think like, he's been so consistently good and it's against the Cubs. We have to remember that. Like, it's not like he's facing an all-star lineup. It, yeah. The hitting conditions are great, but if they're not touching, if, not, if they're swinging and missing, it's not going to matter. So I am, uh, I'm sort of iffy on this game. I'll probably have a better feel for that at six Eastern. So I don't know if you if you uh, this is going to be a weird transition to the next game, but um, I don't know if you remember because Luis Giolito is uh, Giolito is on the slate. Lucas Giolito for a good portion of maybe his first year, whatever it is, like all of DFS was playing all these hitters against him, just like attacking. He had like some of the worst metrics, and yeah. and and even like like the bat, like Derek Hardy, like for for start after start after start, he started just really just turning around. But he kept on under projecting him. He said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. He's going to regress. Or he's going to regress. And meanwhile, the guy just puts up freaking yeah, but they, young numbers like like for half the season. Right. And eventually he, you know, Derek Hardy, just, you know, he, the batch is kind of caught up. So maybe I was wrong, whatever it is. I say that as background because we have Martin Perez. OK, in this in this next in this next game. OK, so Martin Perez was just every I, and you caught up this for anybody. Like He was the pitcher that everybody just stacked against. It's like, I, I want to play five men against him. And if I can't do that, I want to play eight men against him. You know, I want to play seven men against him, nine men against him, whatever it is. The first one to start against Martin Perez. And now I'm looking at a, a video on YouTube saying, the quote is, can Martin Perez really win the Cy Young? Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so I'm just saying, all right, that well, all you're going to hear when you watch content today and what it says, well, obviously Perez is due for some negative regression. Okay. Fair enough. But all I see is what I see. <laughs> That's right. 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 <laughs> and, uh, and, and what's really messed up about it is, is the projection systems still have, li have no respect. I mentioned mm -hmm. that Seattle was the, was the stack that I was getting to the most. It's really close between that and Tampa. Okay. <laughs> when, when I run this stuff, wow. with my projection numbers. Yeah. So, so I, I say that only to emphasize that the projection systems literally are, literally have no respect for Martin Perez, like at all. Okay. Yeah. And I can't, can't imagine why uh, maybe there's some advanced analytics behind the surface. That's, that's, that's doing this. But the fact is, is that the guy is freaking mowing people down. Right? Yep. Um, am I getting to him? I don't know. <laughs> um, Ryan Yarbrough 
I have him as totally perfectly viable on a slate like this, right? Because, you know, it, when, when there's a great hitting environment everywhere, maybe you should just play a pitcher against a team that's not a great hitting team. So, so maybe Yarbrough just makes some sense. I, I even, like, in my first FanDuel lineup, because I really wanted to get in, like, like guys in, on, on, on uh, FanDuel, I actually – saw what I could get if I played Yarbrough at like 6,800 6, on or 5,500 on FanDuel even. So, so Yarbrough, I think a slate like this, I, I think is not the worst thing in the world. Um, so it, it is where I am. I got Tampa right now popping as the best, uh, one of the best stats, which I don't want to play. Okay. Um, and I am, I am mildly interested in, in Ryan Yarbrough. Yeah. So just to, to quickly shout a few things out about Martin Perez, um, he stu- he's nine games this year. He started, uh, uh, the first two were sort of, you know, getting into the groove kind of games. He's had a quality start in every other start. He has not given up a home run this year. He is leading the league in ERA. I know you guys don't care about ERA, but that's the facts. And, um, I, I am not going to mess with it on <laughs> right. this, in a bad hitters park. It just doesn't make sense. But I, but I agree with you, what, what you said about Yarbrough. He belongs in the, the conversation with these guys. I probably am not going to end up playing Perez either because of the price and the fact that the strikeouts are still a, a little bit of a thing. But, I mean, man, I, I don't know why I'm not. I'm, it's <laughs> Right? <laughs> it's, it, it feels kind of silly almost. I mean, I know it's a big slate, but. It, here it is right here, by the way. Martin Perez for AL Cy Young, right on the YouTube. There it is right in there. Yeah, I mean, if they won some of the games he pitched, that might help a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, uh but yeah, I mean, and, and, and Yarbrough and, and also fits in with your thing. Texas went crazy yesterday. Uh, maybe the state, maybe, maybe, maybe the bats quiet down a little bit today. I have to check on the roof information later and see if the, if it'll be open there, but you have a very low total in this game. So to not consider both pitchers feels like it would be a mistake. And while, while the, all the analytics don't like him, uh, Vegas, Vegas has started, has come around where they're not, they're not five and a half, six runs every time Perez is starting. They're not right. considering the guy hasn't given up more than one earned run in his last seven starts. Um, he's literally, these numbers are amazing. She's listen to this, you know, seven, seven innings, one run, seven, nine innings, no run, seven, six innings, one run, six innings, one run, seven innings, one, no runs, seven innings, one run, seven innings, six innings, no runs. Like, I mean, if we're, if we're going to be stacking against those guys on these big slates, I just, I, I don't care about even what the regression level is. Like he's still a good, competent enough pitcher. Well, well I'm, I'm going to shout out to, um, I don't know if you know, um, uh, Andrew Barber, he's he's kind of a guy I follow on Twitter. He used to be a poker player. He's kind of overall kind of like a smart guy. Um, and one one thing he always talks about when when people start arguing about whatever on Twitter, or whatever, he says, so what, what would what would have to what would have to be the case for you to for you to accept that you're wrong? You know, what evidence would you have to see to accept that you're wrong? And I'm not saying that you're wrong, but 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 what what would you need to see? So let's just say that you went into the season, all right, and you said, okay, Martin Perez is not gonna is, is not going to be an awesome pitcher. So what does the guy have to do to prove you wrong? There has to be something, right? You can't just say, this is no information that we're going to process. So what if I told you that, and you listed his resume right here? I don't know if it's enough, but it's, damn, it's a pretty damn good argument for you know, why you really should be playing hitters against him. Just, I mean, how many, how many samples does the guy have to put up to erase, to erase a memory of where he maybe used to be worse? Yep. And, and people, it happens in, in baseball these days, you see guys, people do drastically change things every off season. It's not like the old days where you sort of just are who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to throw one thing out about the, the bat, I, well, it is an interesting projection system. And I, and I think it's, it's cool and all that stuff. There are some things that Derek Cocardi has been more wrong about than anybody I've ever seen. He said that he, he, he said that Tatis is not even a major league level uh, shortstop. Um, he, should, he shouldn't be considered one of the best hundred players in baseball. These are actual quotes from him with Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, was convinced that Vlad was incredibly overrated and, and would never be a, a, a great hitter in the major leagues. I mean, some of his stuff, it doesn't account. And then I, I, you know, I just, even now you watch him in the top prospects will come in pitching wise and they're like, yeah, well, this guy sucks and all this. Stuff. And I was like, no, that guy's had one start in the major leagues and is like one of the most dominant pitchers in the minor leagues. So there's a lot that, get, that, that they get completely wrong and they're really, really slow to adjust to what the reality of certain players are. Um, so with older players, sure, you can trust the bat a little bit more, um, but with, with, with newer players especially, they are just so, so wrong. And they're very slow to catch on to that someone else might be a different hitter. 
So just just throwing that out there for those of you who do subscribe to the back, because I, I I like Cardi and I think there's a lot of a lot of good stuff in there. But some of the stuff is just is is built on too much of uh, too much history. So it's really going to underrate a lot of the young young talented players. Um, so you have, next so you, have 13, you have a thirteen you have a you have a thirteen game slate, and and the funniest thing is that there's like a zillion great environments, and and it's so funny. Like any other slate, you would say, okay, who's playing in Coors? You know, who's going to be 40% owned? Do we have to play them or do we have to fade them? And now you have a slate where I barely remember. I barely even noticed. <laughs> I don't think this game's going to play for one thing. So, oh, really? That's I'd cool. be really surprised if it does. And it's going to change the ownership of everything as we've seen before. I mean, you've got incredibly strong rain. It, it would be a spot where you definitely don't want any of the hitting anyway, in my opinion. Okay. So, so, so we're going to, um, we're going to operate on the assumption. Well, I'm not going to operate on any assumption yet. I, I will say this, that assuming it does play and the weather is good, neither of which is going to The weather is not yet going to be right? good. Right. Um, I would have Colorado and Miami as, as, as rating pretty well. And you'd finally, you finally have a chance to play them at not high ownership, I think. I mean, there's so many other things you could do today. Um, but, I mean, any listen, on a 13-game slate, if you have weather issues, I mean, no thanks. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to avoid this yeah, I, I, the only thing I'd be interested in this game if it played would be Marquis. Um, and I would actually have him highly rated. Uh, 6,300, we're looking for other guys. You're going to get zero ownership on him. He's thrown six innings or more, four straight starts. Uh, while the strikeouts haven't always been there, this is Miami also. And you've got plenty of strikeouts in that lineup that is projected to be rolling out there. A um, couple guys that don't strike out, but mostly you have, a, you know, you've got some that strike out a ton like the Coopers and the Solaires and the Aguiars and the Jesus Sanchez and I was uh, sorry. And uh, Jacob Stallings. But, uh, but I, I would be on Marquis side of anything. Uh, you have 50, 52 degrees, the wind's blowing heavily in from center. Uh, there's no way you're going to get me to play hitters on this slate from this game, unless something changes drastically with the weather, which I don't. So, happen. so you got, you got in the last three games, right? You have six, six pitching options yeah. and you got four of them that are kind of high price pitchers that are a, that you have to kind of figure out what you want to do with, because, you know, you have, you have a, like you have a slate where you can make the argument that, that you want to pay down for pitchers because some big hitting team is going to get there. But yet on the other hand, it'd be nice to have something consistent that you could rely on at pitching. So we have to get through these last three games and we have to really think about where these pitchers are going to be in our rankings, because let's just start with the first one, right? So Atlanta, Arizona, I, I consider Morton is just as one of those guys. I mean, he's, 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 you know, maybe not as good as these others, but, but he's 9,200. He's going to project. Okay. Um, and um, he has to be considered um, Arizona. I think that's like one of those roof open roof closed things. Um, it's, open. it's open, which doesn't help. <laughs> um, so, I mean, do you want to pay 9,200 for pitching at all today? I guess it's a very interesting question. Um, I'm not getting to Arizona as far as hitting goes, so it's nothing like that. But I would actually get to some Atlanta. Um, I have them as kind of an okay stack to play. So, for me, this game, especially with the, wind, with, the, uh, with, the, with the roof open, I would consider Atlanta as another yet another stack to play. And Morton, I'll, I'll, I'll throw in the hopper, but I just – I think the other, I think I have better, even better nine K options than him. So it's going to be 90 plus probably tonight um, in Arizona. Um, I, I think that this is a good time to stack Atlanta here. Um, I do have them as one of my preferred stacks. I also have Morton as a guy I'm considering, but I like other guys a little bit better. Yeah, and, same thing uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, that's, that's, that's pretty much what I've got for this. But I do like Atlanta. I think Acuna is one of the best plays on the slate. Um, I just think Castellanos is, is pretty awful, to be honest with you. And if there's one thing he does, though, that's okay, is he doesn't, like, he doesn't get crazy wild. He just gets hit a lot. <laughs> um, but I, I like, I like the uh, Austin, Austin Riley, Acuna, Ozuna, Olsen. Um, and then you got your share. You, you can pick one of the catchers if you want to. Who do, I mean, William Contreras, not even a, it, it, we got the other Contreras now is 5,500. I mean, Jesus. Um, but yeah, I do, I do like Atlanta quite a bit. And I also, uh, I'm considering Morton, but I, I don't know where I'm going to end up on that one. He, he is in the, the list of guys of like the five guys who I think have the best chance at a, at a good outing, but I don't know, man, it feels, you know, bad weather. He hasn't been quite the same this year. 
but I still believe in the the long-term talent. I don't believe that Arizona has been quite as good as they've shown so far this season. So um, for what it's worth, Morton does have uh, is tied for the highest strikeout prop on the slate. Um, and I think that stuff is always important to look at. So, uh, all, right, so all right, here we go. Um, yeah, the pitching, the pitching duel here. So Javier nine K's in his last two starts <laughs> for a guy that we used to, I used to think and say, okay, he's, he's good, but doesn't have the strikeout upside. Um, I mean, what am I going to do, but respect that? You know what I mean? Especially against Oakland. What, what's the, what's the weather like in East California? What's the weather like in Oakland? What's the weather like in LA? I mean, it's not, it's, it, it's set only 70 degrees, still wind blowing out 12 miles an hour, but it's only 70 degrees, which feels, you know, it's actually the warmest game so far this season in Oakland, but, but still but, but uh, cold in every place else on the, on the board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I like Javier. I think he's my favorite. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Certainly up there. Uh, and then on the other side, Montas is good too. I just, I just, again, I'm just being uh, just name brand oriented, I guess. I'm just I'm much more concerned about going against Houston than I am going against Oakland, you know? So, so uh, I, I guess Javier is my favorite of this game. Uh, if I'm going to go play Montas, I may as well, may as well play Gaussman, I guess. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, well, I think Gaussman was the, is the clear one, right? Okay. okay. I think, I think Gaussman is the obvious of, of the guys, even though again, yeah, it's a little, but I mean, are the Astros really that much better of an offense than Chicago? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's certainly not by a, a huge margin and we've seen the Astros not been, not, not have huge games. And we have a huge sample size here or, or considering modern day baseball, a huge sample size where, you know, uh, Montas has faced this team a ton of times. This is an interdivision game. You've got 160 uh, at bats against him from the lineup that they'll be rolling out there. He's got about a 25% strikeout rate. They hit about 250 off of him. Nothing that let leads you to think anything, but nothing that stands out is like, oh, this is an amazing play, or nothing that thinks makes you think that it's a bad play. And on this kind of a slate, that's that's good for me. That, I'll take that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so, I, so I, I'm in open to both the pitchers in this game. Uh, I don't think on this slate we need to get creative enough to try to play Houston or Oakland. No, definitely so, not. Yeah. Um, and then we get another stack that we're going to probably have some interest in. Not only up. that, but I mean, then, then you have Orias. Um, yeah. Yep. I have, I, I have him just as good as the others. Mm -hmm. um, look, you know, it, it's, it's, it's uh, on, a, on a slate where, where pitching could be tough to come by. What, what, what are they minus 300 in this game? You know, whatever they are. Yeah. Um, minus 342. Yeah. That's four points. You know what I mean? Like right. Right. Uh, so, so for me, I mean, I, I actually, or Arias and, 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 um, and Javier and Gaussman. Uh, yeah. I have those three above. I mean, I, I had, and you, you, you had this pro probably instinctively more than I did, but just kind of talking through this. I have those definitely above Montas, right. And definitely mm -hmm. above more, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so I think those three are clearly the top three and, um, just that, just, I just don't. I just don't see Pittsburgh doing anything against them. Now, again, what what upside is that going to provide? How many is he going to get? How many fantasy points is he going to get? I don't know. Twenty. I mean, that, that's that's probably good enough, right? Um, so I like that, and and obviously the Dodgers are you know as as because it's day ending and why uh, they're a good stack, right? Not right. to mention, not Mitch to mention Keller, they're against yeah. the righty. Uh, not to mention they're against Mitch Keller. Um, so. Uh, just watch the lineup. Make sure because I know Bellinger was is kind of questionable right now. He had. I think. He had he's, I think he's gonna. I don't. I don't expect him to play. Yeah. Okay. So watch for that. See if Lux gets in. See if Rios gets in. You know what I mean? All these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, just 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 watch for the lineup, and that I don't know it might not come till later, but but you know you you certainly can certainly can jam as many Dodgers as you feel like playing. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I, again, the only thing stopping me right here is, is the weather. Um, it's, you know, 67 degrees. That's not bad. It's just not the, right. what we have elsewhere. We do have 10 mile an hour winds blowing out, which is pretty high for Dodger Oof. Stadium. Oof. Um, every wind seems to be blowing out today. It's crazy, except for Colorado. Um, so I think Rios is a priority for me, actually. I think at 3,900. I just love this guy's power and um, I wouldn't leave him out of too many stacks. And I know it's hard because Freeman is the guy everybody wants to get if you're going to make the stack and uh, on DraftKings, you can only have one of them. But if you look at Rios, his home runs, no, DraftKings, you play Rios at third base. And on, oh, did they switch him? Mm -hmm. Finally. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. 
My, well, then I take that back. I take, it, I take that back. Um, either way, I, I think the Dodgers do end up the lower owned of the bunch of these stacks. And when that happens, even with a weaker lineup that they're sporting out there, uh, it's hard not to have interest. The problem is the pricing. Uh, if you get Kevin Pillar, you at the, in the nine hole, like you're, you're, you're two point three for anybody on the Dodgers is is that's the only way. To, it's like it's really hard to make it work elsewhere. I mean, you have sixty two hundred Turner, uh, sixty three hundred Betts, fifty six hundred Freeman, fifty three hundred Will Smith, fifty three hundred Justin Turner, fifty one hundred Chris Taylor. You know what I mean? These guys, it's not cheap. Um, other than Rios, so uh, I, I do like the Dodgers. I have them a little bit behind the Mets in Atlanta but it's only based on the weather factor. And I will certainly have some full Dodger stacks tonight. Uh, where are you, like where are you with the rot? Where are you with the Rias compared to these other two? I have Urias as, I think he's a better actual pitcher than probably any of the guys we mentioned. If you want to know the truth, right. and everybody's like, Oh, he's having a rough year. He's doing this and that. He's what has he given up this year? He's, he's got like a 2.3 ERA. Like he had a, he had a bad outing against, against uh, Philly. And um, I just don't, I just don't think he's nearly as, as, I mean, he's had one really, really awful start. And while the fantasy numbers aren't quite there because the strikeouts haven't been there, the reason why I have him a little behind Javier and Gaussman, and 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 it's weird to say this about Javier because Javier usually has the shortest leash of all of these guys. And right now, I have you know if you, or Urias hasn't thrown more than eighty-seven pitches in a start this year. Uh, Javier has been in the nineties his last two starts. Montas can throw one hundred and ten pitches if he needs to. So can uh, Gaussman. So that's just the only thing that has me like not quite ahead of, of, of with him ahead of these other guys. But I do think the best guys are all in that 9K range, Ur Urias, Gaussman, Javier, and then followed by Morton and Montas. Uh, yep. Montas is a little bit ahead of Morton. But I do think it's worth it to try and take some stabs on these cheap guys. Like uh, the one who I'm probably going to end up getting some into is Kirby. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, you know, the other one who, I mean, honestly, this, it's not really another one who really stands way out but I would probably dabble with some Syndergaard or Corbin. Right. Um, it's a tough slate. I mean, I've got 20 potential pitchers that I could use, but none of them do I feel particularly good about. <laughs> um, except for, I do feel pretty good about Gaussman and Javier, at least to have decent outings where, hey, 15 points might get it done tonight, which is also speaks to maybe we do want to find the cheaper guys who can get us those 15 points. The problem is you're just dealing with a huge amount of variance and, you know, in a guy like even Kirby, although Kirby, I actually don't think it's as, I think he's, I think he's got like, they'll, they'll, unless he's getting rocked around, I don't think he's going to go anywhere. And even Corbin, as bad as he, you know, can be and all that stuff, it takes a lot for them to bring him out early of games. I mean, he's, he's been giving up runs and they just let him stay in there at least for five or six innings. And he's 5,900, which means that if things go his way um, against the chalky, one of the chalkier or better offenses on the slate, so it's, it's really weird to have, you know, both sides of it. But we just know Patrick Corbin has a wide range of outcomes. What he doesn't have that he used to have, though, is the Robbie Ray strikeout thing, which which was all, what always made him a great tournament play and a great guy to stack against. And his strikeouts are just so far down this year. I just I don't know if that's going to if that's ever going to come back. I, I mean, I much prefer as opposed to Syndergaard. I much prefer uh, Brian Yarbrough at seventy four hundred. Mm -hmm. um, and and, you know, the one guy that we keep uh, that, that two guys that that we talked about very, very briefly that I want to revisit just because, I mean, these guys may, may end up being really, really like zero owned or is the Castillo and the, um, and Blake Snell. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that Blake Snell game, I mean, whether it be him or the Cardinals can, can, um, can be, uh, can have both, both sides of that can have upside. Um, yep. This whole, this whole slate, this whole slate is just a lot of stuff, but maybe, or maybe, 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 Kirby, like you said, Kirby, and I think how about how about something like Kirby and and, and Marquis if, if that game plays? Um, can you can you do that uh, if that game plays? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think there, I think you could do that. I mean, for what it's worth, so there's there's eight players tonight who are tied for the highest K props, and they're all five and a half. And the, the cheapest of those two are the last guys, the guys you mentioned before, was Castillo and Blake Snell. Right. And I do buy into these things a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Marquis, who's one of the cheaper guys and would be completely unowned if he played, has a four and a half K prop, which is only one less, obviously. All the other guys with a four and a half K prop are much higher. Even Urias, who we're talking about paying 9,100 for, has a four and a half K prop, which I like the over on that one. Um, Martin Perez is a four and a half K prop. Adam Wainwright has a three and a half. Um, there, you know, it's not like Somebody could have an outlier game, and, and I kind of like already, you know, I'll, I'll give a couple of the vets away, the Gaussman at over five and a half strikeouts, 
and I really like the uh, the over of uh, Javier at five and a half, and I really like the over at four and a half on Urias. But it's 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 going to be a hitter slate, I think. Um, I'm sure there might be an outlier game from any of these any of these top arms, but I think this is going to be a high scoring slate. And I think it's going to be mostly done with the bats. So just, uh, just to just to reiterate, I mean, my my top stats. I mean, our, our Dodgers, Mets. Um, we're going to presume Colorado doesn't play. So Dodgers, Mets, Atlanta, uh, Yankees, Minnesota, and then and then just below that, Detroit, and Milwaukee. Um, and then on FanDuel, it's 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 uh, Mets, Dodgers, Milwaukee. Yep, um, that certainly makes sense to me i have yeah, like i said I, I have mets dodgers and the mets braves dodgers in that order i'd like milwaukee and chicago a little bit and then i want to get i think i might revisit the seattle and washington stacks and then minnesota if they end up low owned i will take some shots there but if they end up where i have them i will probably avoid it um all right guys well i'll be live at six eastern and i will have my i have my builds up i already have my core plays up on uh on saber sim uh through true true gfs of course and I would, you know, encourage you guys to check that out and I'll get the bills and bets up shortly. So sheets, anything else before we get out of here? Uh, no, sounds good. All right. Good luck to everybody. And uh, let's make some money. Hey, hang on there a second.